Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the next update. Um, hope everybody's having a good Memorial Day weekend. Um, big thanks to uh, my brothers and sisters who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom uh, that we enjoy. So please uh, make sure that you include them in your thoughts and prayers. Anyway, let's see what we've been up to. So you probably remember we were doing this uh, uh, surround. Um, for the windshield. So we've got it to a point where um, it can take a light sanding and then uh, some clear coat. Uh, some of the other things we've been doing is um, we've been doing some of these vents. So this is a vent I've made out of steel that goes uh, in here. This gets mounted permanently and then the hood lifts and uh, retracts around it. Um, we've also did some things that we had to do to the hood in order to get it gapped properly. So we actually cut the sides down on both sides to gap it. Uh, the front gap still needs a little work, but we can do that with filler. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, remember after we do any filler, and again, we're using Dura glass plus uh, some carbon fiber inside of it to make it nice and strong we put another layer of carbon fiber on top of that um, so that we don't get cracking or, or any problems uh, in the final finish. Uh, other things that we have done is uh, working on the windshield wipers. We basically had to make some extensions. These are the little stainless steel pieces you see down here to bring it up through. This one's about right. This one's a little too tall, so we'll probably uh, shave that down a bit. We're starting another one of the vents over here. Um, we've done most of the plastic work underneath. We had to cut these vents on the hood in order for it to uh, <clears throat> in order for it to fit on um, all of the plastic pieces underneath. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, 3D printed vents here that will take air from down here and the condenser back up through uh, the hood here. So that's one of the uh, big things that we've been working on. And that does take quite a bit of time. One of the other things that I've been working on is cutting glass. So I have these um, windshields that are cracked and broken, um, basically junk. And I've been practicing my cuts. You can kind of see a cut there across the diagonal. Um, so I'm starting to get better. Um, luckily I have a bunch of this glass to uh, keep trying to make clean cuts. Uh, it's important uh, that uh, you follow a very specific prescription in order not to, for cracks to propagate. And to kind of test this out, I cut um, basically a little quarter window that will go up front here. This is probably not going to be the final window, but because I'm not sure I like the black strip on the bottom. But as you can see, it will fit in there um, with some uh, rubber sealing and whatnot. So um, nice thing about this is this was a piece where I had to cut actually three times to get this shape. And it turned out pretty well. Now some of the tools that I got for it are the importance part. I got this uh, little glass cutter here. Now let me get that in focus. There we go. Um, so it's like a German glass cutter. Uh, it actually takes oil inside of it and um, has a little tapper on the end. I recommend you get one of these and not use one of those cheap $5 ones that you get uh, from the store. Um, and then also you'll need some of the special glass cutting uh, fluid. <laughs> that was kind of funny, glass cutting fluid. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for the off-color joke there. Um, anyway, and then you need some denatured alcohol, and I put some in a uh, spray bottle, labeled it ISO. Um, and that's for once you get the glass... Um, Kind of cut you have to uh, tap it to get it to snap 
and then uh, in the gap you put the alcohol and then you light it on fire. That starts to soften the uh, laminated glass. As you can see here, there's uh, plastic in between these two sheets of glass. That warms it up and then you can just start slowly pulling down on it and eventually it will uh, start to fold over and then you take a utility knife and cut the rest of the plastic and there you go. So I'm going to practice this a uh, few more times um, before I actually uh, do a real windshield because uh, I'm kind of dreading it. But you know the windshields are 150 bucks. It's not like I'm doing a 400 or 500 dollar windshield. Um, so that's why there's two reasons why I picked the uh, minivan windshield. A, it's dirt cheap. It's like 150 dollars. And B. Um, it's the only one that was long enough to cover that span because that's a lot of window space since it's laid down so so far so after this um, we're gonna do some more electrical we're gonna work on doing the uh, air system the air system is important for getting the car out of the garage and then also we're gonna get the engine running again so again we can drive it in and out of the garage Put it back in um, or front end or however we want to do it one of the other things i've been working on that is not as glamorous is these doors um, as you can see in here maybe if i get um, i've been making these little panels uh, uh panel uh attachments and basically they're just an l bracket a 316 l bracket and then they have a uh m6 uh, screw in them and then i got these inserts that i put in from the other side those will get uh again puttied over with some of this stuff and then uh again we'll sheet it with another layer of carbon fiber uh just to keep this stuff from you know down the line popping out or or uh cracking the paint or whatever now this has all been in a big effort to get these joints to be nice and consistent. I still have some work to do there, obviously, but down here you can see they're pretty good. Uh, the other thing too is, is getting this door to open and close. I'll show you one of the other issues I've been having. So, um, and that has to do with the door jam back here. So if we open the door, see if I can do this with my phone. Ugh. So uh, I got the door open. <laughs> anyway, I had to put the phone down. But uh, as you can see, as the door comes down and you watch the latch, it has to go here. And you can see I had to make a little ramp in here for it to slide and latch uh, down. So <clears throat> first of all, that meant getting the door um, to come out right properly at the right angles and then come back in at the right angles. So I actually had to shim the uh, hinge up there. Um, I got I used some automotive shims. That's these little guys right here. They work really well. Um, and so I shimmed that and I was able to get the twist of the door and the, uh, the gaps and everything and have the door come up right and everything. And then to close properly so that you don't have to pull it in or it comes down and hits this uh, steel right here. So that took quite a bit of work. Um, these, these doors are a never-ending uh, issue, but uh, we keep making progress on them. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but anyway, that's where we're at at this point. Uh, we've got a lot more to do. Um, so stay tuned uh, for our next uh, update, which uh, should be next weekend. So anyway, have a good Memorial Day weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please leave comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, thanks again for watching. Bye.